Hello, today we're going to revise the motor effect. Just so that you're aware, the specification point is 6.7.2 and this QR code will take you to the BBC Bite size which goes through things in perhaps a bit more detail than what I'm able to do in this short video. So to remind us what we mean by a current, well it's the rate of flow of charge. So those little electrons that flow around the circuit, they go from the positive terminal around to the negative terminal. So the positive one is the one with the longer line. When a current flows through any wire, whether that be one around the house or around school, a magnetic field is produced around that wire. So around here, we've got a current, but also around there, we have an induced magnetic field. The difference with this picture compared to the last is this one just doesn't have the picture of the cell or the battery. So it's just a wire with a current flowing through it, a long wire. So we can then draw that magnetic field looping round part of the wire. But of course the current flows through all of the wire so we get lots and lots and lots of loops or lots of magnetic fields that go all along that wire. So the magnetic field that gets made we can make it stronger and we can do that by making the current that's flowing higher. The further away you get from the wire the weaker the magnetic field gets so to make it stronger just get closer. But the thing that's going to make the biggest difference to increase the strength of our magnetic field is to turn it into a solenoid. Now a solenoid is just a posh name for a coil of wire. So here is our original straight wire with our magnetic field all the way down. And now what we can do is turn it into lots and lots of loops and we would call that a solenoid. So the big difference here is the pattern that you get with the magnetic field. So rather than lots of single loops all along the, the wire, here we've got the magnetic fields working together and making it get stronger. So we've got one going all the way through the middle and then we've got a series of other ones that do not touch but certainly do loop around getting further away as you get further from the solenoid. You also get a north and a south pole. So the north pole has the arrow coming out and the south pole has the arrow going in. Now hopefully you've noticed the bit in the middle where the magnetic field lines are closest. That's where they're strongest. So we would say that the magnetic field in this green area is strong, but we'd also say it's uniform. And what we mean by that is we've got a series of straight lines that are all the same distance apart from each other. You may have also noticed that a bar magnet has a similar shape field to an electromagnet. As a reminder, a bar magnet still has a north and a south pole, and the arrows from it leave the north and then go round to the south, just like our electromagnet. Now, if we wanted to increase the strength of our electromagnet even more, other than to increase, say, the current, what we can also do is add what's called an iron core. And that's just a piece of iron that feeds through the middle where the coils of wire, the solenoid, wrap around it. So officially, our definition for an electromagnet is a solenoid that has an iron core. On to Fleming's left-hand rule if you're taking the higher tier paper. First things first, make sure you know which is your left hand because they are a mirror image of each other. This only works for your left hand. And each thumb or finger means different things. So first finger, f -f 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 first, f -f -f first finger, f -f -f field, and it goes from north to south. Your second, c -c 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 second finger is current, and that goes from positive to negative. And finally, we have the thumb motion, and that tells you the direction of the force that gets induced, and that goes from the bottom of your thumb to the tip. So to be clear, your thumb tells you the force or the motion, your first finger tells you the direction of the magnetic field, and your second finger tells you the direction of the current. Now, my wife is from North Yorkshire, and when she was at school, she learnt this as Middlesbrough Football Club. Interesting. So now let's have a go together. So get your left hand, make sure that your thumb, your first finger and second finger are all at right angles to each other. So you might feel a little bit of pain if you, if you keep it uh, in this position for, for very long. So we've got north to south to start with. So magnetic field, north to south. Let's assume that the current is going this way. So we would say that's coming out of the page. So our second finger points out of the screen in this case. And then that forces the wire to go up because our thumb points up. So we've got first finger filled, second finger current out of the page, and then you should have your thumb pointing in that direction going up. Here is the same idea, just a different picture. We've got the current going into the page, the small arrow just there. So second finger current, first finger field is going in that direction. So you need to rotate your first finger towards the right. And now your thumb should be acting down, and that tells us the direction of the force.
Now we can increase the strength of the force by increasing the strength of our permanent magnet as well. We can also increase the strength of the force applied by making the current flowing through the wire bigger. On to the next part for students sitting in the higher tier paper, and that is the Bill equation. Force equals magnetic flux density times current times length. Now, I'd be surprised if you were unsure about the unit for force, which is, of course, newtons, and current is amperes, but less certain maybe about B and L. B is our magnetic flux density, and that's measured in Tesla, capital T, and that represents the strength, how strong the magnetic field is. So the stronger the magnet, the bigger the magnetic flux density. Now, L represents the length of the wire inside a magnet. So if we go back to our picture that we looked at a moment ago, we've got the outside magnetic field, and that would be the equivalent to our magnetic flux density, B, measured in Tesla. So if we made it stronger, the value of the magnetic flux density would increase. We've then got a current that we know flowing through a wire that we can measure using an ammeter. So in order to find out the size of the force on our wire, using the equation, the final thing to know is the length, and it's the length of the wire that's within the magnetic field, so it'd be that distance just there. So you'd use a ruler, probably measure in centimetres, and you'd need to convert it into metres. Now on to the electric motor. So how does a simple motor work, say for example, in a car? We need to use Fleming's left-hand rule again to show the direction that things move. So let's start with our magnetic field. So we know it goes from north to south, we can see that here. So our first finger points towards the right. Now, when dealing with motors, because we've got a current going up on this side and down on this side because it loops around, we need to deal with half of the motor first and then the other half in a moment. So let's focus on here. So we know the first finger is going this direction. The second finger is going that. So we say the second finger is going in to the page. So if you now get your left hand, first finger, field, left to right, second finger, current into the page, your thumb should now be pointing down. So there's a force applied that causes this part to go in that direction. But what about the other side? So again, first finger field, left to right. But this time the current is going this way. So we say that's out of the page. So your second finger is now pointing towards you and your thumb should be pointing up. So fingers crossed, that's what you've got. And that then gives us rotation in the anti-clockwise manner. Now something that's just here is what's called a split ring commutator and what that does is it keeps the current going in the same direction at all points because as this spins this side then becomes on this side so the current always has to go in this way and then this spins which allows the current to flow in on that side and out on the other to keep the rotation going. 